Hey guys, today's Sunday, February the 11th of 2024, and I want to go over natural gas forecast for this week. So without any further delay, let's get into it. We're going to be covering a lot of things, but before I even start, who's going for Kansas City and who's going for San Francisco? I know my hands are up for San Francisco. I don't know about you, but that's my vote. But you know, if they're going to manipulate some things. I'm just saying, I'm just saying there's some kind of manipulation. It could lead to the chiefs. Anyway, leave, leave your comments. If you think that could probably play out. Corruption is everywhere. I digress. All right. Seasonality. Let's go. Or commitments of traders report. That's coming up next. Important numbers or positions to watch that November 20 high of 96. Five five seven. We're right here at eighty two. If we take out that, that means that natural gas could potentially continue pushing lower. Commercial are hedging, thinking that it could be going lower, and that's what they are showing with their money. If they take out ninety six, obviously, uh, the next target would be that one fifty, that uh, February twenty seventh high. Same thing for. Uh, Large speculators, that November 20 low of minus 120, or somewhere around minus 114. If we take that out, uh, your next target would be minus 180. Interesting, 180 and 120. Anyway, uh, large speculators are betting that it's going to go lower. And I want to show you something interesting here. I don't really look at this one, non-report. I believe this is like traders like you and me. Uh, from what I hear, uh, they're going long. So interesting. They're not even following the speculators, but I guess they think it may be so cheap, it's not going to stay here forever. But I just wanted to kind of give you that little insight. But yet, yeah, large speculators are selling, commercial are hedging, so they're betting that it's going to go lower. And that's what the Commitments of Traders report is saying as of now. Here is the uh, almanac. <clears throat> I wanted to show you something I really don't cover, but you know I'm starting to see what how this plays out. Uh, this is where I live in Tennessee. So I'm going to click on there and it's saying uh, February 10th through the 18th, snowstorms on the north, rain in the south, cold, then warm. Rainy period. So pretty much kind of the temperature average. Uh, this kind of played out. It was sunny and warmer. Uh, east, like pretty much last week, was a little more nicer. Uh, but we're going to be interesting to see uh, this uh, this week and coming up and then kind of more, I guess, normal here. But I figured I'd show you that in regards to the almanac. Seasonality chart. I, use, I like to use 5, 10, 15, and 20. As you can see, March is weak. So we got to keep that in mind and factor that maybe March could be weak uh, using the five-year average. Uh, we take uh, this and swing it to 10 years. You can see that February and January are weak. We did our high was it January. Actually, we did a high on October 27th, but the high then was on January 15, uh, 12th, I believe, around there. Uh, and we've been going low, but you can see that March is a little lower. But uh, April is the strongest, so I'm going to be talking about that later in the video about April. Uh, as you can see, April is the strongest in August. Uh, so we see that uh, February is, is the weakest. Uh, March, weak, but you know, not as, not as weak. Using the 15, you can see that February is the week. A little weaker. April is the strongest month. And uh, February week, a little stronger, above the 50%. And April remains the strongest. Okay, this is uh, our seasonality chart I like to see also. And this is uh, what has happened. January uh, the 12th around there, 15th. Can't remember the date. Uh, we just started tanking. We're here somewhere in February. Uh, when we were looking at this a couple of weeks ago, or maybe last month, I was indicating watch out uh, somewhere around the 31st. And then from there, kind of went sideways and took this dip. So it's following the five-year average pretty well. Now the five-year five average kind of gets a bump up to at least February the 15th. And then it kind of goes sideways. There'll be a few ups and downs. Just pretty much sideways for February and March, according to the uh, five-year average. But definitely a bump uh, right here. So maybe for a scalp uh, all the way to the 15, 
you know, maybe not a scalp for a couple of days, maybe a little, I don't know if you want to call it a swing trade. Uh, if this plays out, uh, that's, that's, a, that's an option for, for you guys, you know, different traders that do different strategies. On the 10-year uh, average, you see that uh, it goes down to like the uh, 12. So we're close as this week. You got the 9th, and then you got the 12. Uh, but something happens around the 15 that it kind of peaks. And then it just kind of goes sideways to the 26, 27. And it could probably get a pop or just kind of grind slow, you know, sideways to, you know, grinding higher slowly. I don't know. One of those things. But definitely looks like it's a sideways action for uh, March. Using the 15 year average around the 12, same thing. Maybe looks like a little pop, but it's pretty much a lot of sideways action. Maybe from the March 15 to the 26 gets a little. Uh, a little grind to the upside. So what's my takeaway from this is that maybe we get a little pop into the uh, 15th. Uh, and then from there, you know, either sideways, depending on, on the weather, if it starts getting really cold and crazy, uh, maybe sideways to higher from here. But, you know, that all depends on, on price action. But that's what we kind of or what I'm kind of looking at in regards to seasonality. Hey, guys, so this is my uh, spectrum cycle analysis. And I wanted to show you a few things of my observations. First off, the uh, this three cycles here that are important, but there's two that are kind of like fading away. Interesting. Uh, the one I've been tracking is the 142 cycle. And you can see that if we zoom in here a little bit, it bottomed out somewhere around July the 10th. And this cycle has been going up, but natural gas has just been sideways to lower while this cycle goes up so it hasn't really been taking effect it hasn't been really working uh the next one that i watch on natural gas uh, natural gas is the 124 and this one bottomed out around july also and this one is up and you can see the natural gas has been going down i feel like maybe these cycles are either fading away i mean they have a pretty high bartel uh, but there's one now that is kind of creeping up and is Getting a stronger position is the 228, the 228 cycle, and that's this cycle right here. So what if, uh, and you know what's interesting also, this one hits a trough around April. So this is like a cycle, it's like a baby that's growing, and it's, I guess, is getting some influence here. So I don't know. Seasonality shows that April is pretty much the strongest, but could it be that maybe we're doing an inverse? Hmm. Interesting. We did a low here in uh, April 14. And we'll be doing another low in April. I'm not saying it'd be exactly on the 14th. We did that high in August. Uh, and then there's a low uh, on this one that I'm just kind of watching now. I'm putting it on my radar. So uh, April uh, around the 30th. And this could fluctuate a couple of days, you know, here or there. But as of right now, April 30th, there's a there's a swing low. And also this cycle down here is kind of bottoming out. So maybe for a possible swing play to the upside. So maybe the low could come in around here in February. I don't know. I'm just, just throwing thoughts and, you know, tossing things in my head. So these two I'm watching uh, very closely for the weekly. I don't know if I said that earlier, but this is the uh, weekly chart. Uh, cycle analysis. Let's look at the daily to see what we could extract there. Here's the uh, daily chart, and uh, I wanted to show you. I'm using data from uh, 2007, around there, February 2007. And the cycles that are showing up here is the uh, 337, which is this one. Uh, this one is showing more of a, uh, either sideways to deeper uh, possible low cycle trough. Uh, around June. So that will be interesting. I'll have that on my radar. And then we also have one coming up, which is a 257 on the daily chart. This is a little more fractal narrowing in. And you can see right here is this uh, cycle low February the 26th. Did that, not, did that date come up somewhere in my last video? Hmm. February 26th. I mean, cycle trough low would it mean does it mean anything i don't know we'll see but just keep an eye on that the 257 does a low and then it 
then the cycle goes up. Here's a broad view of uh, our brothers and sisters here on the energy sector, as you can see. Uh, crude, just kind of hardcore chopping back and forth. These are weekly. And it went up, it went down, and now it's going up. So inside bars on the weekly, undecided, but very volatile. Uh, you can see here, uh, our Bob looks like it wants to break out even higher, or it's close to it. And heating oil just got a nice pop. Interesting. So we got this pullback here, and heating oil is moving up. Is heating oil like an indicator telling us it could be crazy cold? I don't know. Something to think about. But keep an eye maybe on heating oil. Just, just came across my mind. Uh, maybe this could be a gauge to let us know if this is going to turn around here. But watch. I guess heating oil. Let's see how that plays out. At least it has to take out that high. Ethanol just kind of grinding lower but the anomaly i've always mentioned is when the energy sectors start going up uh, natural gas just tumbles and when natural gas starts to going up everybody else starts tumbling down this is interesting anomaly that i've noticed so i want to just let you know that uh it's it's playing out again this is our elliott wave chart as you can see it's showing that you know it's working out a wave five here so keep an eye on that uh, projection wave five here could be possible also dollar fifty. So this is the sweet spot for me, uh, one hundred sixty five all the way to one hundred seventy six. A uh, possible turning points would be February the ninth, uh, which is uh, you know it was uh, what is it a uh, uh, Friday or something like that. Uh, so it could probably play out for Monday, and also keep an eye out for the twenty six. As you can see, the Stokes. Are very oversold and it's kind of give you this indication that maybe we could get a little pop or a little swing play to the upside so let's see how that plays out for this week here's another chart i look to i like to look at the advanced uh, swing uh gan lines are negative uh and the regular one is negative so very risky if you wanted to go long here but we're trying to you know use other things but overall if you uh, don't want to risk too much these will try to will try to keep you on the right side as you can see, we're pushing lower. I added a mirror cycle here from that January 12th high, and it's showing indication possible uh, turning point. Uh, I don't know what day is that. Like the 12th, pretty much this week. So this one is bullish going up from a mirror cycle. The yellow one uh, did a bottom here, and now it's going to be topping out here. And this one... It's kind of up to sideways. The Dewey cycle is still pointing down uh, to uh, March the 6th. Uh, on average, all these cycles are pointing down. So <clears throat> if there is sideways to lower, this one is indicating that. So it's kind of mixed uh, in regards to these cycles. One is pointing down, and then you got the Delta saying keep an eye out for uh, February 26th. That, that's a hot day. So how are you? Put a big sticky note in front of your computer for every 20 february 26 is popping up a lot of places so keep that in keep that in mind but yep uh what about february 26 could it be that we just go sideways this could be the capitulation day and then shoot up uh you know or not capitulation maybe just kind of grinding lower lower sideways lower and then boom from here i don't know we'll see or it could be reverse could it hit here and then turn down I don't know. I'll, we'll see how, you know, when we cross that bridge, but just kind of showing you the things that I'm observing. Okay, we got two more charts to look at, and then we'll uh, close this video. Uh, we'll look at the uh, spectrum analyzer here using the RPO oscillator. You can see that there's some kind of bottom here, but then there's also another one here that uh, has influence, and it kind of shows a bottom somewhere around March. So February, March, or radio seasonality are, you know, on the weaker side. Which one is it? Is it going to be February? Is it going to be March? I don't know. Time will tell. The price is king. It's going to tell us what it's going to do. And from there, we, you know, we move on forward. This is a cycle I was watching. I was thinking this was going to play out. So far, it hasn't happened. I have it on my radar still, but I want to just see what's going to play out. If this is still going to be a, you know, a top or a target to the upside or, or I still going to follow it. It's just kind of in reverse. So I have that there. That's a PC cycle. This is also a PC cycle. And this one shows pretty much where there's a turning point right now, this week coming up. And it kind of pops to like the 17th. Kind of makes sense, the 15th, 16th, 17th. 
And then it kind of dwindles down to the uh, March and then, you know, kind of back and forth. So um, I have this one on my radar, but this one is showing some promises uh, for this week. We'll see how it plays out. That's another PC cycle. This is another PC cycle I'm using, and this one failed here, but it's showing projection higher to a uh, March. This is an annual cycle, which is pretty much the sun. So a yearly uh, annual cycle, and it's showing, you know, possible maybe a bounce from here. We'll see. A lot of things lining up. I went ahead, did the uh, neural network computer uh, algorithm testing, you know, see, you know, its accuracy and it's showing somewhere around the 19th possible turning point. Uh, I have another model too. It says around the 14th. Uh, so 14 and 19 for, for the uh, computer guys, or the algo guys or neural net guys. And then the Bradley model, uh, you can see that it's indicating some something happened doesn't say directional wise then the ninth the uh 11th and then it goes all the way to the 25th Ooh, 25th 26 remember that number keep that on your radar this one i really don't cover a lot but i like to use it this is called the uh, fourier fourier analysis I, I like to use this on the crossovers i always see that there's something fascinating or as uh jim will call it anomalies uh, the 9th and also the uh, 14th. Here's another one that I have uh, from a different swing point. The 19th and also the uh, 27th. Ooh, close to the 26th. Remember that number? Uh, here's another one I have here. Ooh, the 26th. Remember that number? Uh, this one is kind of showing some turning point with the projection line, but yeah, that's if he's 50-50. Crossover 16th, then the 23rd, and then uh, March the 10th. I think that's it for this chart. We're going to go to the last chart, and uh, we'll end this video. Okay, so this is the last video. As you can see, that 181 is very important. Uh, right here, uh, we look closer. You can see that regards the volume, the bulls <clears throat> showed up at least today or Friday. So they were defending 181. I think 181 was a key level uh, for a bounce, or at least if starting next week, we're going to start grinding higher. This could be significant, but we'll see. The day is young. Let's go into our simple glance chart. The MACD on the monthly has had a crossover. <clears throat> Woody's pivot. Uh, which is a monthly that's the s1 is 145 i have a, a level that i'm watching is 165 macd hasn't really dug in deep but you know it's just the way it is um and the daily hasn't had a macd crossover yet and we had a low of 181 i have a target of 165 let's go to our midpoint chart <clears throat> Uh, this is my uh, little entry level where I'm thinking of, you know, dipping by toes. There's a big extreme, 133. I don't think it's going to get down there. There's also 169 that could probably hit that and bounce. Um, and, you know, I might not even get my entry point, but this is the sweet spot, in my opinion. Also, you got 136, which I don't think will get down there unless something really extreme. Now for the week. Uh, you need to get above 197 to stay bullish for this week only. If for some reason we start pushing lower, we will have to take out 181. Your next target would be 174, 166, and there's my entry right there, 165. So that's extreme if Monday and Tuesday are going to go down. Uh, we're going to start grinding higher here, you know. Staying above the VWAP for the U.S. session and staying above at least 192. Then targets for the upside for this week would be 212. Obviously, you can go get this midpoint, 209, uh, 212, 220, and then 226 extreme. No, 228 extreme for this week only. If it gets up there and uh, you're holding long this week, I will lock in profit if it was me. Um, so yeah, that's for the week.
And for Monday's session, or I guess the overnight, 185 is uh, lying in the sand. Anywhere below 185 uh, shows signs of weakness. And targets would be 182, 180, and 178 for the overnight guys or the overnight session. Uh, but if you're above 185 and above the VWAP, which is this yellow line, uh, targets to the upside is 188. 190 and then 192 you could probably throw in there 193 uh 194 which is our our low in uh, april the 14th uh statistical calendar should i do the statistical calendar i haven't even i just browsing okay so monday down tuesday down wednesday up uh thursday up friday up uh the biggest down days uh, will probably be, I guess, Monday and Tuesday. But going off the top of my head, uh, and Wednesday is the biggest up day. And then Thursday and Friday were up, but kind of like flat. So it's just kind of like, eh, you could be grinding up. Here you could be grinding down. But in regards to money... Uh, it's indicating these two day. This one has a little more influence Tuesday for being more of a down day. And Wednesday uh, has the more, uh, most uh, probability of, you know, making money if you're going along. Uh, and also Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, but not by much. Uh, the weekly, uh, the week on average is down for uh, the week of the 7th. And also uh, for the month is actually down also. Anything else? Uh, let me see. Maybe I could just look at it real quick. About. About the. Uh, the weekdays. I had it somewhere. If not, it's okay. I could always talk about it Monday. Uh, weekdays for February. Okay, so weekdays for February. Uh, Mondays are down. Tuesdays are up. And uh, Wednesdays are down. And Thursdays are the worst days. And then Friday's down. So Thursday's the worst day. According to weekdays on uh, average, it looks like Tuesdays is the only positive days for the whole month of February. And everything else is down, and Thursday being the worst of all the weekdays. So, uh, interesting stats for February for night, guys. So, I am going to sign out. Hopefully, you like this video. Hopefully, it was very informative. Very, uh, you know, you got a lot to see, a lot to digest, a lot to think about. Should I go long? Should I go short? Should I stay away? Should I wait for February the 26th? I don't know. I'm just showing you the data and what I'm seeing, you know, Gantz theory, cycles, Elliot Wave, everything. Oh, you're getting it all in one shot. Whatever happens, you know, you decide. You, you, I'm not telling you what to do. Just put your stops because this market, we're dealing with the uh, Black Widow. As I call her, the Black Widow. Uh, I'm going to focus on hanging out with my family and looking at the Super Bowl. And watching all the weird stuff that happens out there and and then just kind of enjoy the game hopefully you do as well or whatever you like to do for fun love on your family your friends have a good day and i'll keep you posted on my thoughts on natural gas